Again, from the Winship, Winship Cancer Institute at Emory University in Atlanta. We've got back-to-back -back Emory uh, people here. I'd like to invite him uh, to detail the primary results of the Phase three LORA study that looks at osimertinib after chemoradiotherapy in patients with unresectable stage three epidermal growth factor receptor mutated non-small cell lung cancer. Thank you, Dr. Grallo. Good morning. I'm excited to announce a new advance in the treatment of lung cancer through this presentation. Patients with non-small cell lung cancer are often diagnosed at a locally advanced or an advanced stage disease. Nearly one-third of patients diagnosed with non-small cell lung cancer present with stage 3 disease. And of those stage 3 disease, 60 to 90 percent will have unresectable disease because either the tumor is invading on neighboring organs or there are too many lymph nodes that are involved. For these patients, the current standard of care is giving chemotherapy with radiation together, followed by one year of immune checkpoint inhibition in the form of dervalimab. Now, while this has been used routinely for the past few years, whether this benefits patients with EGFR mutation has been not clear. In fact, a subset analysis of the pivotal Pacific study that showed dervalimab as a new standard of care failed to show a difference in outcomes for patients with EGFR mutation between dervalimab and placebo. On the other hand, a number of smaller studies have showed that using EGFR inhibition in the setting may be beneficial. So to verify this, we conducted the LORA study. Usumertinib is a third generation EGFR inhibitor that is used routinely for the treatment of advanced stage non-small cell lung cancer and more recently for surgically resectable lung cancer. We specifically designed the LORA study for patients with unresectable non-small cell lung cancer with EGFR mutation. And these patients had the most common classical activating exon 19 or exon 21 mutations. They were randomized two to one to treatment with osimertinib at 80 milligrams per day or placebo. Treatment was continued until the patients benefited from therapy or they experienced some form of toxicity that made it unviable to continue the treatment. Now for patients in the placebo group, when they had confirmed progression, the study provided osimertinib as crossover therapy. The primary endpoint for this trial was progression-free survival assessed by independent radiographic review. Patients underwent CT scans of the chest at baseline and an MRA of the brain at baseline and followed at regular intervals throughout the course of the study. Here are the PFS results by independent radiographic review. I'm excited to say that Osimertinib provided a clinically significant and statistically significant improvement in progression-free survival. The median PFS was 39.1 months with Osimertinib compared to 5.6 months for patients treated with placebo with a hazard ratio of 0.16, which was statistically significant. The two-year PFS rate was substantially better for patients treated with osimertinib, as you can see on the slide at the two-year time point. When we look at percentage of patients that developed new lesions while they were on study treatment, 68% of patients in the placebo group developed a new cancer lesion, compared to 22% in the osimertinib group. When we look specifically at brain, which is a site for common disease progression in EGFR mutated non-small cell lung cancer, the incidence was much lower for patients treated with osimertinib at 6% versus 28%. Similarly, progression within the lung was also lower for patients treated with osimertinib. All of this add to the fact that osimertinib reduced the incidence of new lesions both within the chest and outside the chest, particularly the brain, in this particular disease setting. The adverse event profiles are summarized in the slide. When you see the adverse events in the placebo group, these are spillover toxicities from prior chemotherapy and radiation, and radiation pneumonitis is the most common side effect for this uh, patient population. When you see the osimertinib group, there was a slightly higher incidence of radiation pneumonitis, 48 versus 38 uh, percent. Skin rash and diarrhea that we see with EGFR inhibitors were seen. Uh, these were all uh, primarily low grade in severity. There were very few grade three or four events. And uh, I would also point out that the 
duration of time for which patients were on treatment with osimertinib was almost four times higher, so they had more likelihood of reporting adverse events. And overall, we conclude by saying there were no unexpected safety signals. So in conclusion, the LoRa study demonstrated statistically and clinically meaningful improvement in progression-free survival for patients with EGFR-mutated, locally advanced, unresectable, non-small cell lung cancer. The hazard ratio of 0 0.16 and a median PFS was 39.1 months with osimertinib compared to 5.6 with placebo. We will also show at the plenary session that the PFS benefit was consistent across key subgroups. At this point, the overall survival results are not mature. There's uh, a high proportion of patients crossing over to the control arm. While we see a favorable trend towards osimertinib, we are not able to report uh, on superiority of survival. At this point, the survival results are premature and not statistically significant. Uh, I will say that uh, based on these results, osimertinib will become the new standard of care for patients with locally advanced non-small cell lung cancer following definitive chemo radiation. And EGFR mutation testing should be conducted for patients with stage three disease in order for patients to achieve optimal outcomes. With that, I will close and thank you for your attention. Back to Dr. Gallo. Thank you, Dr. Ramalingan. Now, Dr. David Spiegel, ASCO expert and chief scientific officer at the Sarah Cannon Research Institute in Nashville, Tennessee, will provide some additional comments on this study. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Raylo. Congratulations to Dr. Ramalingam and his uh, co-investigators. It really is outstanding. I, I want to make three points about why this is a new standard of care. Number one, to have an 84% reduction in the risk of cancer progression or death is meaningful to not just patients, but the, the providers that are overseeing their care. The second point is the crossover. We, we need to applaud the the study designers, the investigators for offering osimertinib for patients who progressed on the placebo arm. We don't always do that because we're trying to find an overall survival benefit, but in this case, it was the right thing to do. The third point is when patients progress, they don't always get a chance to get that crossover therapy or their, that next line of therapy. In fact, in lung cancer, about 40% of patients will never make it to the next line of therapy. So to have an 84% reduction in your chance of cancer growing or dying uh, by receiving osibertinib after chemotherapy is the right thing to do. And, it, and this will be practice changing. Starting as soon as this becomes available, the label gets expanded, this will be how patients are treated uh, wherever they can get access to this drug. Thank you, Dr. Spiegel. So osimertinib is already approved in EGFR mutant non-small cell lung cancer in the metastatic setting, and it's also approved in the early stage setting for resectable non-small cell lung cancer after resection. So this is a new population of unresectable non-small cell lung cancer that also shows some very significant benefit. The brain metastasis data is really impressive. So now we have osimertinib across basically all EGFR uh, mutant non-small cell lung cancer with, with data to back that.